Once again, hello everyone. I am Roseto Dorquista and welcome to Pantas Malaya. Um, our topic for today is about a thesis. So if you are a college student, a fourth year or a third year college student, you are going to write e your thesis for your uh, for your bachelor's degree. And you ever wonder how to write a good uh, a good this is introduction for your paper um, today we'll talk about that so we will be discussing about the the structure of your introduction so what are the the best points or the strong points that needed to be present in your thesis introduction so without further ado okay so by the way uh, let me talk about first the purpose of the introduction of your the what is the importance of having an introduction in your paper or in your thesis so not only does that introduction contain your thesis statement so the thesis statement is your uh, it could be a hypothesis uh, your purpose your your specific purpose of writing the research paper or your thesis so not only that your introduction contain the thesis or your thesis statement but also it provides the initial uh, impression of your argument the writing style and overall quality of the work so a clear concise and well organized and engaging introduction will help to efficiently set up your paper okay so the introduction must captivate your audience attention and interest so otherwise the audience may not be convinced to continue reading your paper so you have to be more convincing so starting with your introduction you have to already capture the interest of your reader to continue reading or continue exploring your paper your research paper or your thesis your manuscript okay so you have to do that uh, that is the, the the real purpose of your uh, introduction of having an introduction in your thesis so your introduction also serves as a preview so it also as act as a preview for the remainder of your paper so uh, conveying necessary background information to your readers identifying identifying your topic and its uh, significance and unveiling how you will organize your essay so that could be in your introduction an effective introduction should uh, also establish your voice as a writer and your point of view towards your topic so you must be solid on your topic with your introduction so you have to introduce your topic to the audience in your introduction make yourself make your introduction convincing to the readers so for a thesis driven paper provide an overview of your basic argument so and why you will attempt to convince your reader of your stance on a particular issue so if your paper deviates from the general outline suggested so in the introduction then consider working your introduction so the thing is mm, so you have your thesis title you have your introduction then you are writing your introduction now then but later in your um, thesis your topic has um, slightly or somewhat deviates from your um, gener uh, your introduction so the general outline of your paper slightly uh, slightly deviates or somehow it deviates from your introduction so you must change your introduction to, to make it more suitable with your paper your introduction should um, talk about truth about your paper um, it should be more convincing well that is the purpose of your um, introduction now what are the contents or what are supposed to be the content of your um, introduction so the introduction must include a the background information so if there are necessary things there are necessary um, data 
it should be implemented or it should be included in your information already it should be included in your introductions information okay so you should have a brief explanation of the terms and familiar to your audience so maybe there are uh, some technical words uh, that is um, vital to your research or th to your thesis so in introduction you have to explain that to make it uh, to make a clear view of your paper you don't want to you don't want to give uh, a, a shady or an a less informative introduction to your reader so it must be clear so another is identification of or literary analysis paper or research paper on a literary subject so always provide this uh, the title and author of the text and the introduction of lit the literary analysis paper and identification of primary characters if applicable like literary and in literary analysis paper or research paper so on a literary subject so literature we'll talk about uh, uh, you have you will have your literature in your uh, chapter 2 so and also the content of your uh, introduction should uh, include the thesis statement well except for a narrative thesis well, a, a thesis statement is uh, the main the main purpose of your research the main the main thing about your thesis or your research paper so if there is a considerable background information it is acceptable to include a paragraph or I immediately following introduction that includes this information um, also the let's talk about the content and st style or the organization of your introduction so your introduction will shift depending on the essay genre okay so there are different uh, essay uh, there are different genre in the research or in in having your thesis especially in during the uh, introduction so for example if it's a research paper or argumentative paper uh, the background on your topic or context uh, thesis statement overview of the paper's organization so again if it is a research paper or an argumentative paper so the, st the content the style or the organization and and the organization of your paper or your introduction rather should be the background of your topic or the context and then the thesis statement overview of your paper's organization but if it is a literary analysis paper it should be that um, the include the included part is the author title of your of works title of works you will discuss the thesis statement and um, any relevant background information overview of your paper's organization but if it is a narrative in a narrative form so the seating should be included seating is the time and place or the narrative hook the emphasis on voice but there is no thesis statement for the introduction if it is in, in a narrative form so if it is in the research paper or argumentative paper it should have the background topic or the context the thesis statement the overview of your paper's organization if it is in literary analysis paper it should include the author title of works you will discuss uh, the thesis statement in the relevant background information or overview of the paper's organization so literary analysis paper is uh, something like a literature review uh, review paper okay so uh, that is the uh, those are the the big points about uh, having having your um, content in your introduction and in building your introduction okay so in generalization the content should have the background information necessary 
a brief explanation on unfamiliar terms then the identification of mga, uh, of the literary analysis or literary papers or research papers existing literary subjects <coughs> the identification of primary characters if applicable then your thesis statement so these are the contents so as per the organization how are we going to structure or organize your uh, research paper how do we construct your paragraphs so the organization in an in introduction um, uh, an introduction's logical organization can be compared to the image of a funnel or an inverted triangle so triangle is this like but you are going to inver invert that one mm, that would be the somehow it, your introduction should look like an inverted triangle or a funnel so that is the introduction usually begins with a general overview of your topic and then become more specific narrowing to the thesis statement or your thesis statement so imagine a an inverted triangle so if you invert a, a triangle the the upper part now has the, the wider wider in length so that means that that is the part where you include um, the general overview of your topic then as it goes down it becomes um, more specific uh, narrowing to your thesis statement so the last one is your st thesis statement so for example uh, in your introduction you will talk about coronavirus so if your topic is about coronavirus or somewhat or somehow or uh, your research paper your system is introducing a new way to um, suppress the contagious effect of coronavirus say for example if that is your thesis so in your introduction you should talk about the current situation of coronavirus in a general manner uh, around the world what is happening now around the world with coronavirus and then after that you are going to narrow that one say for example you will um, highlight some information about the specific uh, country say for example in Philippines if you are living in the Philippines so from a general perspective of the coronavirus you uh, transfer now the topic to a much um, closer or a much uh, specific overview so from general overview which is the world um, the world's current situation on coronavirus and then you narrow it to philippines then after narrowing that into the Fili philippines situations or situation with coronavirus you again move to the next phase and try to see your local uh, government how your local government is responding to that uh, pandemic so, and then from that perspective you can now build your th thesis statement so from general uh, a world view of the current pandemic then make it specific with uh, the Philippines how the Philippines is responding to the pandemic and then make it into a local local government unit how does your um, locality um, fight about the fight with this uh, pandemic and then state your thesis statement so if you're trying to solve or trying to create a solution for the for this pandemic or for the to stop or to somehow lessen the contagious effect of coronavirus so that would be your thesis statement so again an inverted uh, triangle from general overview to a much more specific overview and then your thesis statement world philippines lgu thesis statement so, but there are some pitfalls 
in composing an introduction so somehow there are those things that you should not um, uh, include or you should not uh, have in your introduction like for example the dictionary definitions so while you should explain in a terms that your audience needs to know or to understand your papers or the content to so avoid beginning a paper with a dictionary definition such as um, like you would say uh, Webster's dictionary defines joy as great pleasure or happiness so that is not that is not correct so do not do that in your introduction that is a pitfall you know that is a no no so avoid that one uh, this approach to an introduction is glitch okay so uh, another is overuse of facts without rendering an opinion or analysis so you are putting some uh, facts in your in your introduction but you are not trying to give uh, an opinion or analysis a solid uh, base facts or uh, in a scientific manner so avoid doing that so implementing too many facts will produce a dry lifeless introduction and will overshadow your own voice as a writer like um, you are trying to say let's go back to the example about the coronavirus you are putting uh, percentages you are putting numbers you are putting uh, statistics in your introduction without uh, having explaining what is the what is the connection of those uh, items or those definitions or those uh, figures into your own uh, research so that is not good so overuse of facts without rendering an opinion or any analysis so we're putting a uh, 50% out of the blah 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 30% out of this and, uh, and then you are not trying to give an opinion or any analysis about uh, the relevance of that uh, statistics into your into your th research so it will overshadow your own voice as a writer so you have to be more uh, informative clear concise but as well uh, develop a develop a an image to your reader that you are a good writer uh, um, make your own voice as a writer to or in convincing your reader so another one is repetition of similar ideas so your audience will notice that you are not saying anything new or fresh like say for example so the topic is about the the coronavirus and then um, somehow informations are scattered around the news scattered around the internet so there are uh, peoples are are already aware of this information they're already aware about the the content of the news they're repeating this uh, information in your introduction is um, it will become uh, it will make your introduction dry or not 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 interesting to the readers because they already knew the information they already knew well, what is going on with the world with the philippines so with, you, with the current um, current locality okay and then somehow about the ideas similar ideas so your your introduction is uh, somehow copied maybe not intentional but someone could detect that uh, your ideas is um, your ideas or the ideas being um, the ideas being put into your introduction is already presented in another thesis or another research paper or in another literary materials so avoid that uh, kind of uh, pitfalls uh, avoid that kind of um, introduction So there are different types of introductions. So we have the analogy, allusion, anecdote, the description, definition, okay? Or you are going to 
have an example a question to start with a question or a quotation you can as well uh, start with uh, statistics okay so first one we'll talk about the the first type of introduction which is dilution so make a comparison that will catch your readers attention and introduce your topic you you will compare things so analogy like um, for example you will create an analogy about um, the the current the current situation or the pandemic with a movie like uh, uh, a movie about zombies a movie about a virus so that kind of things or analogy of a computer virus so you are going to compare the, the, the actual coronavirus and the computer virus so I compare these two topics so you're going to build an analogy okay so you can do that in your introduction how about allusion so an introduction of type allusion is making a reference to another literary work a person or event so you're going to quote someone's uh, quote someone's research or literary works okay or a person or, ev uh, or an event so you are going to start with your um, thesis introduction with those so an allusion make a reference to another literary work the next one is anecdote okay this is for narrative only um, if you are writing a narrative paper it should uh, not include a thesis statement right so for example anecdote start with a brief story that is closely related to your topic that is anecdote that is how to build an introduction in a, narr in a narrative form so then a description type of introduction are going to write a detailed description or uh, to illustrate a specific point about your topic so you have to describe so for example um, you are going to describe a, the, the, the common the common effects of of having gadgets for how many hours in a day like if you have 24 hours in a day what will be the, the effects of having gadgets for 23 hours straight or 20 hours straight so you have to write a detailed description to illustrate a specific point of your topic then you could also have introduction of type definition so your introduction could be in a definitive form or definition form you have to provide an ex explanation not a dictionary definition but an explanation of a term that your paper uh, that your paper will cover uh, you have to explain you have to explain your thing you have to explain your topic you have to explain your uh, thesis statement okay or you can start with example so another type of having introduction is by giving an example so begin with an example of your topic so that uh, if you think or if you think uh, giving an example to in your or putting an example in your introduction could boost the interest of the readers so you can do that you can build your introdu introduction using an example another thing is having a question in your introduction so ask a question or series of questions regarding your topic uh, do not include an entire paragraph of questions and you also have to answer that question okay so you are the one putting the question in your introduction you have to answer that question by making that you will uh, prove your voice as a writer you will uh, prove your to, you will prove yourself to the reader that you are effective 
by being able to answer the question or you can do your um, introduction with a quotation so start with a relevant quotation or an epigraph a quotation that appears at the beginning of an essay or literary analysis so you can have that in your introduction too uh, you have to quote something a relevant quotation so from from the works of others uh, other re literary works or other uh, research paper or other reviews and you see that it is um, it fits with your topic with your uh, thesis statement or your introduction or your entire paper you can have that you can quote that one you can include that in your introduction and that's another way of uh, saying that you are reading a literary or a literature of, of your topic so you, it is establishing a fact that um, your thesis is not just a byproduct of your imagination but a product of a thorough research okay and then you might as well include statistics so a while ago I have talked about having a, a figures and numbers in your in your uh, introduction thesis introduction you can also have that one statistics provide a statistic or a statistics to open your discussion and to give a concrete example that illuminates your topic now, so for example what is your common problem in the previous example about corona so how many uh, percent from the total population of the world is not suffering with uh, the coronavirus so with that total number of um, infected and with the total number of death or the current cases of the coronavirus so how will you how will you solve that one so you give the statistical report discuss that one and give a concrete example that illuminates your topic of your uh, thesis um, statements so you can have statistics but uh, don't overuse statistical figures in your uh, introduction that would also uh, that would also give impression to your bad impression to your readers okay so what are what are thesis what are these thesis um, statements? So let's talk about thesis statements. Thesis statements establishes the overall point of your essay, and it fulfills two main objectives. So first, the thesis must state your topic. Second, so the thesis must convey what you will prove about your topic, your opinion about the topic. So or the thesis statement is most often embedded in the introductory paragraph usually at the end of that paragraph so according to the Simon and Schuster or Simon and Schuster's handbook for writers the basic requirements for, the th for a thesis statement includes the following the essay's subject or the topic that you discuss or the, the essay's purpose either informative or persuasive or your focus on the assertion that presents your point of view or it could be the specific language not vague words or the specific statement could be a brief overview of the topic's subdivision so there are at least four strategic uh, way to develop and narrow thesis statement so to write an effective thesis statement start with a general idea and then sharpen your focus suppose so supposedly this will be very easy for you if you have developed your uh, problem theory analysis so this uh, your problem three analysis part one and part two is the is uh, the main purpose of 
those problem three analysis the two problem three analysis is supposedly to uh, make an effective thesis statement but um, if you haven't if you haven't done a problem tree analysis so there's there are four specific uh, strategical way to develop uh, an narrow uh, an effective this is a statement so the first one is choose a topic number two focus the topic uh, for example the step one choose a topic the examples would be film or pop fiction and then step to focus the topic uh, the excessive viol violence in, in pop fiction and then step three um, narrow the topic further by posing it as a question say for example why does uh, Quentin Tarantino employ excessive environment uh, we can we can have an, a, a much common example step one choose a topic our topic would be the coronavirus or the pandemic as it is for example the pandemic step two focus the topic so from pandemic which is our topic we have to focus the topic into um, emergency response uh, from that emergency re response which is the focus topic for step 2 we proceed to step 3 narrow the topic further by posing it a question say for example uh, why does the Philippines why did the Philippines uh, having a difficulty in in responding the pandemic uh, we can have that uh, it is a question a narrow uh, question so the main topic is uh, the coronavirus or the pandemic and then the focus topic is the difficulty in we have the uh, the focus topic is about the emergency response okay again step one choose a topic which is the pandemic step two is the focus topic which is the emergency response step three narrow the topic further by exp uh, by posing it as a question why the philippines is having a difficulty in emergency response during the pandemic and then number four answer the question so the answer is your thesis statement so for example uh, to answer the question uh, your question in your step 3 we could say um, the Philippines is having a difficulty in emergency response during the pandemic uh, the Philippine government is not prepared in terms of uh, emergency response it's not prepared with strategic plan oh, we can have that that would be your uh, thesis statement now that would be your problem that would be the, the the statement that will connect to your thesis problem context of the study so your thesis statement should be clear and direct and should entice your audience to read further its subsequent paragraph and the body of your paper should support your thesis statement and prove your claim there are nine errors that you should avoid in composing a thesis or a thesis statement so one a thesis cannot be a fragment it must express a complete thought number two a thesis must not be worded as a question Number three, a thesis must not be too broad. Number four, a thesis should not contain unrelated elements. Number five, a thesis should not contain phrases like I think or in my opinion or either of the two because they weaken the writer's argument. So the word or the phrase I think and the phrase in my opinion are not acceptable in your thesis statement 
then a thesis should not be expressed in vague language so you should be clear in your thesis statement a thesis must not be expressed in modeled or incoherent language number eight a thesis should not be expressed in figurative language or in symbolic way it should be the, the actual thing the actual um, topic uh, a direct uh, word that explains your thesis statement to your topic and then the last one is a thesis should not simply state a fact okay so those are the nine um, nine errors to avoid when composing a thesis so I hope lear you learn something from this uh, video if you have additional information or if you have other um, discussion regarding on these matters in building a, an effective introduction please comment down below so if you like this video might as well give a thumbs up and then thank you for listening that's all everyone thank you and special thanks to special thanks to the tutoring center of box county community college mabuhay